if God is not a man, then we need to stop saying he or him or my father, because God is a spirit. If God said, let us create man in our image, that means that man is not God. Man is spirit. Okay. He's spirit placed in an earthly body. So first, let's just go back to the concept of who is God. God is not a man. Okay. But because of man's way of understanding God, man always has to have an image of God. And the only way to imagine God is in a human form. Whenever, and I want y'all to hear this very carefully, and, and let, let me let me give a disclaimer, first of all. This is what God has shared with me. Anytime I go live or Rebecca go live on the, our, our Abundant Life TV channel here, we're not coming in to change how you think or how you view life. We're actually coming on to share what God has given us in hope that it will help you search deeper for who God is to you. And I'm putting it out for a reason, because somebody will say, well, he's teaching you wrong. He's telling you wrong. At the end of the day, I'm sharing with you my personal testimony of what God means to me and how God has been in my life, in my walk, in my development or my uh, uh, evolution of who God is. So I want you to get that this morning. And I want you who are truly open to listen. And then you ponder the same question. And so God is not a man. God is a spirit. And so in being a spirit, if man chooses to put God as an image, you have now brought God down to man's level. OK, I want you to hear that. So what does that mean? That means you have caused God to be powerless and given him the power that you think he should have as a man to a spirit versus God as a spirit. I was created in the image and likeness of God, which means I am spirit trapped in an earthly body. And so instead of this scripture says that God said, let us make man, you know what it really said? Man said, let us make God. Ooh. That scripture flipped when man tried to understand the nature of God as a spirit or better yet as a man, because that's always think about right now. If I ask you to think about God, all of a sudden this man in the sky comes to, to light. You don't see a woman. You don't see a Puerto Rican. You most times see a white man. That's what we've been taught in America. Come to mind. You don't see a bronze color as the description was given. And so why am I going here this morning? Because I really need you to open your mind and ask the question, what or who is God? God is not a person. God is not a thing. God is a spirit and the spirit is inside of me from the very first day of birth. Why do I mean, what do I mean by that? We have God allowed you to be born into the world in the human perspective. But when God did so, he took the spirit from him and put in your body when you breathe your first breath of, of life. And now man becomes a living soul. You can find that in Genesis. And if man becomes a living soul, then that means that man is really should be subject to the spirit, not the spirit subject to the man. Are you getting it this morning? Man, for the longest, and if you think about your life, you have been subject to uh, your spirit has been subject to you. How do you feel? How have you been taught? What do you think? If you really study religion, there have been thousands of years that had passed before Christianity even came upon the scene. And the fact that you can take, uh, the other day someone says, well, Carrie, do you believe that Jesus is the only way? I said, no, I don't believe the only way when there was already a pathway to God before Jesus ever came on the scene. If you truly understand the concept, man has created an entity that we are to believe in and make Jesus the central point of it when Jesus was actually a man who was enlightened and awakened and operated in the God gift of spirit that was inside of him. And let me say something to everyone. When somebody does something in the spirit realm that you have never, ever seen before, you will put them in a God category because you have never seen it. You're so used to things being done from a human point that you look for flaws. When you say, I want to talk to God, how do you talk to him? 
Because if we have if we have come to the understanding and develop that God is not a man, that he's a spirit, then that means I can't talk to him as I would talk to a man. I need to talk with him through my spirit. That's why the scripture said they that worship him must worship him or speak to him or serve him in spirit. Then it comes to say, and in truth. So the question becomes, then what is truth? The truth is, I carry Anthony Pope, and I am a spirit of God inside of an earthly body. And the moment that I was born, I was born without sin, without blemish. I was born without anything on my life. I was born, and my infant state was the closest uh, that I ever was to God until I was given a name which became my identity, which became my shackles and brought me into expectations of how we do a view life from the perspective of God. In other words, catch this, man has now been created by our imagination versus we were created from God. Am I, am, are you getting this this morning? And so when I say I am God, that means I am looking past this human flesh and I am going down into the spirit that dwells within me, and I am tapping into my true identity, not the identity that you see. Watch this. I can change my hair as I have. I can change my clothes as I have. I can gain weight and lose weight as I have, but all of those are human features. But the spirit inside of me never changes. Watch this now. Even when you learn how to walk deeper in the spirit, it's not that the spirit change. It means that you as human have died and allow the spirit of God to grow better, to come further, to come out. Jesus was walking in his illuminated state of spirit, not flesh. That's why in that time, and I want you to catch this. If I am God and God is not a man, he's not human, he's a spirit, then the only way that I can get to God is through me. Wait a minute. So you mean, Carrie, that we took literally what Jesus said, that the only way to get to the Father, you can only get to him except you go through me? What people fail to understand what Jesus was saying in so many words is the way you get to God is through you. So if all of you were to repeat after me the words of Jesus, the only way to get to the Father is through me. So say that with me. The only way to get to God or the Spirit of God is through me. Now, if you study the word of God, we know that women did not have any rights that women were in consider uh, below man. So anytime you read the Bible, it's written from a male perspective and it's always he. Males always had the dominant role even in the Bible. So for that reason, they give God the nature of a man. But when you give God the nature of a man, you decrease him from who he is and bring him on a man's level. So let's reverse it and go back to what it really says. It says God said, let us make man in our image. So I see you type it on the screen and I love it. So in other words, the only way I can get to God or better yet, the spirit of God, which lies in me, I got to go through all of my teaching. I got to go through all of my custom. I got to go beyond all that I've come to know and dismiss it and be retrained. Well, as the scripture said, be transformed by the renewing of my mind, meaning take me back to before I was programmed to see God on a man's level and let me see God in a, in, in a spirit level because my spirit came from him. So I need to worship him in spirit. When you do rituals and customs and when you do things that you say gets you closer to God, you're doing what man has known to, quote unquote, tap you into the connection with God or the vein of God. But you don't have to connect or tap into a vein of God if you learn to be God. In other words, be your authentic self and be God. Somebody said, Carrie, you're messing me up with this. And you got somebody saying this man's going to mess you up. But no, I'm trying to get you to understand that when you're sitting here beating your head against the wall, trying to get God to answer you, God is saying, look within. Somebody type in, look within. So I love what one author said. He says, when you talk to God, you are really having a conversation with yourself. 
Because the I am is I am God. So when God said, when Moses said, well, who should I tell them? Sit me down here and say, let my people go. Moses, God said, tell them I am. In other words, Moses, you are me. Walk in the spirit of God. Stand before Pharaoh and proclaim with your mouth. What are you saying, Kerry? When you stop looking for outside sources and you look inside what God is, you will then tap into the spirit of God. So let's rewind it for a second. Someone said, well, Kerry, I'm not filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost is an entity that man created because the reality is this God is holy and God is a spirit. So being that God is a spirit and his spirit is holy, then when I say I received the Holy Ghost, I didn't receive it. It was always there. I just simply now have tapped into it and I have died to flesh and my spirit man is now coming alive. So what we call sin is me trying to de-learn or deprogram what I've been learned in order to live in the spirit. And when I fail to live in the spirit, that's what we call sin or failure. Well, you can respectfully disagree, but that's why I have my channel and that's why I'm teaching. And I express from the very beginning. So whoever you are, and I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm said from the beginning, if you don't like my teaching, you can get off the channel. And I say that for a reason, because I said from the beginning, I give a disclaimer. If you don't like my teaching, you can start your channel and teach your own way. That's what you do. And I want y'all to get that because I've gotten to a point in life where I'm not going to sit here and worry about what people think, because at the end of the day, you have to work out your own soul. You have to do the teaching. You have to do the studying. And while you're going through the rituals, I'm already there. I've already tapped into God in my life and I'm living the spirit of God in my life and I'm seeing the miracles and the signs and wonders of God. So moderators, I need somebody, if you're not a moderator, if you want to be one, do your job and handle any naysayers that want to come on today. Because in church, if you stand up and tell the preacher, I don't like what you're saying, or do you just lift your hand and walk away? So today, lift your hand and walk away. So what do I mean about I am God? Whether you know it or not, and I want you to stop and, concept, and, and, and process something real quickly. You have something called a brain or a mind. And your mind is where the spirit of God is housed. And when you think, when you're born, you, you don't know how to process. You don't know how to think. You don't know how to get into. And so when you process the, t- the teaching that you've been given throughout life, when you have understand that for years and years and years, this has been a teaching. Now, what I find funny, and I want you all to hear me real quickly. I hear so many people say, well, this is what's called new age teaching. It's not nothing new about it if you do study. And I found out that a lot of people that love to argue with you about the, your points of view argue because they have the lack of knowledge of what history shows about religion. Because if you li- really study history, it's the, the, uh, the uh, Asians religions over in Asia that was first. Christianity didn't come along till later on or Judaism or Judaism or either Christianity. All that comes later. So for thousands of years, there was this story. If you study the story of Jesus, there was five different stories identical before he ever came on the scene. What are you saying, Kerry? I'm not taking anything from Jesus. I want you to open your eyes and ask the question, is this the only way to God? And if so, how did people before Christianity get to God? People don't want to study history because history challenges your belief. And that's okay. Because for years I had questions and it was only until I did what the word of God says, study to show yourself approved that no man needs to what? Prove himself to anyone when you study for yourself. Mm. And so what I've come to understand is when you study for yourself, You're going to run into people who have not studied but think they know because they have bought into what they've been taught all their lives. I'm I'm telling you right now, for me to stop and change and really get what God has given me, it is God. Because I have been in ministry 36 years, sitting in the office of an apostle, deep in Pentecost and apostolic, and everything that God has shown me has really, what I'm saying now, what somebody could call heresy. But what God said is, if you don't understand the, the, the true nature of me, then you don't truly know me, know me, the spirit. So I want to give you something, and I want you to think about it. 
If I am a spirit, which I am, because when you die, your body goes back to the ground, your spirit goes back to God. People say, well, then my soul gets judged. But what really gets judged is when the truth came to me, did I dismiss it? Or did I go and research and study for myself that I can make this word either a lie or truth? Because what I found out with our mind and with the complexity of it is that God is, now I want you to think about your mind for a second. You have a brain and your brain controls every movement, every thought, every action, every reaction of your being. Why do you think God has given us all of this power only to be guided by something of this is how it is. And if you do it any other way, you're wrong. If any man, any man tells you that this is the only way to get to God, they are a lie and the truth is not in them. Why? Because God did not give himself to just one specific race of people. Not God. Now, the God that they have made their God, yes. But what you have to understand is, someone asked a question to me, says, well, Kira, do you believe that God in the Bible is the true and living God? Well, I said, well, you do know that the Bible, the Holy Bible, is a lineage of the Jewish people. And for that reason, it would make sense for the Jewish people to believe that this is their God. But if you're white, if you're black, if you're Indian, if you're Asian, if you're from another country or some different uh, ethnicity, then you have your own teaching. And so how is it that someone can tell me that whoever their, their God is, is the greatest God of all if you've never tried mine? Why? Someone said, well, by faith. So what you're saying to me is by faith is a choice to believe in something you can't prove, which means you can be living in ignorance versus ask God to reveal the truth. What are you saying, Kerry? I'm saying, when is the last time you sat down and said, God, I really want to know who you are minus what I've been told. Reveal yourself to me. Oh, see, somebody just said something very key, and I talked about that. Jesus came against the church and this very teaching, and Jesus was trying to teach people how to tap into God within them, how to be awakened. He taught that. He taught it. 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 And then man turned around and turned Jesus into the very thing he came against, which is made him a God. Versus understand that we all are God. Watch this here. And I'm going to give you a scripture real quick. Philippians 4 and 8 says, finally, brother, whatever things, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever thing is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Why is that important to think on those five things? I call them the five concepts to life. What we have to understand is Whatever you think about becomes your truth. As one author said, the world without is because of the world within. Meaning whatever's going on outside in your world is because of what's really going on inside of your world, your spirit. So if you're lacking things outside, it's because you're lacking things inside. And because our power of thoughts, our mind is so powerful, God resides in our mind. That's where he resides. And when you think, you're thinking as God. But if you don't know how to control because you haven't been taught, you'll start to create things and you'll create things out of default and then get mad when you say, this is not what I ordered. So let's look at something real quick. If he said, if that be any praiseworthy thing on these things. So the first thing he said is true. So the word true consists of marked, uh, the, the word true means consistent, marked by harmony, regularity, and steady continuity, free from variations and contradiction. And so what sort of things are true mean? What sort of things are consistent? What sort of things you have seen in your life that are consistent and is harmonious with life? I talked a couple weeks ago about my sabbatical and that I had to get into nature to sync with nature that was in harmony with God. And when I began to sync with nature, I felt God inside of me lock in and I began to see and hear and process things differently because I was now in a true state of spirit. See, when I was being tormented, that was a sign that my spirit was not pure or holy or wholesome. And whatever I was processing was not true. 
And so I begin to harmonize with nature. That's why it's good to get out in nature and get quiet and listen and then let your spirit man harmonize with it so that now you can process that which is true. Next, it said, well, some things are noble. Noble means possessing outstanding qualities. And so when you think about things in life, ask yourself the question, is what I'm thinking about processing outstanding qualities? We have a tendency to always blame things on the devil. When the reality is, it's not the devil, it's an entity that you have created in order to put blame on versus look in the mirror and say, my spirit is processing things wrong, thus giving me wrong results. Somebody better hear me this morning. Stop thinking that it's always this little devil running around with a pitchfork or whatever you have come to think the devil is to be. No, it's the spirit of wrong thinking. That's what the devil is. It's a spirit of wrong thinking thinking. When you think pure thoughts, you get pure results. When you think evil thoughts, you get evil results. Now, here's how we end up walking into problems. It's because when you get around people that has evil thoughts, then because of their thoughts, it produces evil deeds. And you cause their deeds to be the devil when it's actually their thinking that has created their reactions. Oh, somebody better hear the Holy Ghost. When you understand that you're only responsible for how you think, OK, and the more you think that correct way, the more you get what you think. That's why he said whatever things are true. Think on these things. What sort of things are noble or possessing outstanding qualities? Think on those. How many times, be honest, do the thoughts that go through your day reflect negativity? OK, so if it reflects negativity, that means that my processing are not outstanding. It's negative. So how can I blame the devil for that when I am in control of my spirit? And if, if, the, if the spirit of God lives within me, then that means the battle is within my members. As Paul said, when I knew to do right, I always did wrong. You did wrong because not because the devil, but because your mind could not process correctly. So that's why we get transformed here in order to transform here. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. Come on. I told you that man has to put something with a visual. So they put God as a man visual, put the devil as a demon or a spirit in a body of a pitchfork and horns image. But what it boils down to is really wrong thinking. Then he said, whatever things are right, right means conforming to facts or truth. So here's the thing. If I need to think right, then that means I got to know what is right. I got to know what really conforms to the truth, because that's why he said, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. How does the truth make you free? That when you start thinking correctly, negativity falls off and you're free from all that baggage of bondage. Do you hear me this morning? If you could just stop for a moment, because we've been taught to think that the Bible is literal. No, baby, when the Bible was created, it was not created for people. Illiteracy rate was right at 80 to 90%, which means that it was theologians and people who would make riddles or fables to give a story. And that's why if you ever read fables or stories, it sounds so real, but the reality is there's a message being delivered. I'm gonna blow you away in a minute. And this, I'm telling you right now, this is gonna be a two-part series because I cannot finish all this in one day. Mm. So when you learn how to master your thoughts, you then walking in the power of God and you're creating. So what are you saying, Carrie? I'm saying the very reality you live in right now, you created it. Not the devil, you as God. But because you don't know how to abuse and operate your power and you have never been taught, that's why we got to be transformed or deprogrammed from how we have been accustomed to living and understand that I got to live in the spirit. When you go on a fast, you're killing yourself by not nourishing yourself because you're trying to get to the spirit. Oh, my God. That's what fasting is about. It's getting past the flesh to the spirit. But what if you practice meditation every day? And what if you learn how to tap in without going through the rituals? I wish somebody would say amen. And so whatever things are true, consistent, whatever things are noble, possessing outstanding qualities, whatsoever things are right, conforming to facts or truth. That's why the scripture said, be not conformed to this world, because this world or how this world thinks is not truth. So it says, be not conformed to the world. 
because it's not right. Be ye transformed or changed by renewing your mind back to before you were programmed to be wrong. <laughs> then he goes on to say, whatever things are pure. So care what does pure mean? Pure means free from what makes it weak or pollutes or contaminates. Nothing that is nothing that does not properly belong. In other words, it's your responsibility to make sure that what's in your spirit is true and pure and not contaminated with lies or contaminated with man's touch or his. If you really want to be honest, touch with man's power to control. Mm. Someone say, how many of you say, Carrie, this is deep. You, you, you're talking to me today. It's deep. It's deep. That's right, Bill. We got to renew our minds. And you can't renew it if you don't know how to renew it and what to renew it to. Because it's just like sometimes on your computer. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When your computer begins to log dates in your computer of certain events. And then if you run into a problem, you get a virus and you want to reset your computer to an earlier date. It gives you a list of when. What date do you want to reset back to? But you know what the best thing to do? Let's reset back to factory settings. Because even in my setting, some things in place, maybe I got off track. And from that point on, I began to you know, get messed up. So I need to be reset back to factory settings before I was programmed into the ways of life. Oh, yeah, I, I can preach gaslighting all day long, guys. I can because here's the problem. If you truly know the truth and the truth makes you free, that means that nobody can control you anymore. And the worst thing is a free thinking person who has tapped into the power of God. That's what happened to Jesus. Free thinking came against the church, taught against the traditions and customs, and they came against him because the more people you free, the less power the church has. Oh, did I just say that? That's why we're not a church. We're a nation. When you learn to understand, taking back the power of control, it takes it from man who has control to. Do you remember the book? Y'all hit me. I'm sorry. I'm getting excited. I'm trying to pull back. I know I'm talking a little fast, but I'm feeling God. But let me take you back to the movie, The Book of Eli with Denzel Washington. And the greatest scene of that whole movie is when Gary Oldman heard about the book that Denzel had. And he says, I need that book. People will obey anything I say with that book. People will bow and worship and do what I tell them to do with that book. In other words, that book of power in the wrong hands causes control. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for as long as we have been alive and living in religion, we have been controlled by that book and not walking in the freedom of God that God created us to be in. Come on, somebody. I wish you would hear me. That, that book of Eli was so doggone powerful that people missed it. Gary Oldman gave us the secret to the book. It controls the mind of man. So watch this here. If it controls the mind of man, then that tells me that the power of God lies in how men think. So if I get the mind of man, I've got man thus, thus diminishing God. Somebody, somebody, I know you're about to run all over the place right now. He said, but if I can have that book, I can control. But I'm trying to set you free because you are the living word of God, not a book. You are the living word of God. You, when you open your mouth and speak, you are speaking as God and your words are alive because your words have life. But if you don't understand your power, then you're speaking out of ignorance and you're causing damnation. Let me keep going. What several things are lovely? Is anybody being blessed by this? I don't know what my time is. Holy Ghost, help me. Yes, Simon, you got to watch it again. Gary Oldman, that is the secret to the movie. Denzel Washington, he had hid the word in his heart. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. He hid the word in his mind that he might not sin against himself. Oh, y'all missed it. Sin means I hide the word in my mind that I can live according to who God is in me and I won't miss the mark because I'm walking. That's why I walk by faith. Well, God speaks in my spirit and not by what I see or what I hear. Jesus, I thank you. Rosh, I feel God. I feel him this morning. I feel God in my spirit so strong. I feel him. I, and, I, and see, that's how the customer say, I feel him. I feel it. God is a spirit. 
but we call him. My God, my God. What other things are lovely? Delightful of beauty. Harmony of grace. That's that word harmony again. So if I'm thinking about something that is not beautiful, that is not harmonious, that is not full of grace, the other word is attract. So whatever you think about, you attract. And you want to make sure that your thoughts are lovely because otherwise you're going to attract something that is ugly. All right. Then we got the word admirable. Admirable means deserving the highest esteem or excellent. So if I look at all those words, then the question is, am I thinking things that are lovely, true, pure, admirable? Because if I am, I'm thinking as God. But if I'm not, then I'm thinking the opposite. Whoa, whoa. So let me go back for a second before I give you this. So it, he said, if these things think on them. So the question becomes then, what is thought? If I am to think, then what is thought? Yeah, uh, I'm not in no way denouncing Jesus. That's, you know, can I say something to everyone? Um, and I say this out of respect. We don't listen. Because if we listen, you heard me say, I'm not taking anything from Jesus. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you how, why he was crucified. But because I'm coming against the concept of how we were taught that Jesus came to die for our sins. No, no. Jesus died because he was awakened and the church, he came against, crucified him. Because if you talk to a devout Jew where Christianity took his lineage from, Jews will tell you straight up and down, Jesus is not the Messiah. Sorry if I hurt your feelings. So what is a thought? A thought is imagination, concept. So he said, whatever you conceive becomes what you achieve. And if, if, if concept becomes a thought, then I got to be mindful of what I'm conceiving in my mind. Do y'all hear me? If I'm told to think on these things and then God lives in my thoughts because that's where the spirit of God operates. And whatever I think about through my imagination brings about conception or creation. Watch this here. Conception is defined as beginning. So Paul said, think on these things, which he said, conceive or begin with these things. Okay. <laughs> y'all y'all don't hear me I'm, I'm about to blow your mind real quick god can i go can i get there we may go over just a little bit today guys because i got something else next week but i got to get to this so we may go over just a little bit i'm trying to hurry but it's, i can't rush through this so if he said think on these things and thought means conception the conception is defined as this beginning it also the capacity function or the process of forming or understanding ideas or abstractions or their symbols. And so before you do anything, believe anything, go anything, know anything, it starts with a conception. It starts with a thought. Everything in line starts with a thought. Even to believe the Bible starts with a thought. Even to say that I'm wrong and when I, my teaching thought starts with a thought. So if conception is the beginning, and I was told how to think in order to get the results then let's look at something in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter one. Now, ladies and gentlemen, buckle your seatbelts, okay? Because this is what we're going to put the puzzle together. And I'm going to let you see how I am God. You ready? Now, we were told to do this. Whatever things are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, think on these things or conform a conception or began everything with those five conceptions. So if we go now and look at the book of Genesis, chapter one, verse one, it says, in the beginning, in the beginning, as we just learned, is in the beginning of a conception or a thought. So in the beginning, in the beginning. <laughs> Woo. Mm. In the beginning, in the beginning of your conception, God, which in this case, we just say, I am God. So in the beginning, I created the heaven and the earth. 
So what does that mean? In the beginning, I conceived and created a heaven and earth. Watch this here. Are you ready? Are you ready? So if we really break this down during the conception, God thought about or conceived in his mind what he wanted to see. Because the scripture said that the earth was dark without void and no shape. So there was nothing there. So before you even began to process or conceive, you got to see nothing. That's why there's a need for something. The reason why you think is because there's something missing and you got to figure out what to put in that spot. So God conceived in the beginning a thought. And it said that the spirit of God hovered over the waters. The waters is the ability or the fullness of life. And then after he thought about the heaven, he spoke to the earth, which is called reality. See, what are you saying, Carrie? You are creating your own heaven and earth, and you don't even realize it. Because, see, you're waiting to die and go to this place in the sky. Really? Or to go into this ground and burn forever. Really? No, baby. Let's look at this thing from a different perspective. In the beginning, you created with your imagination or your thoughts the heaven, which is above. And then you, in turn, after you create it, visualize it, affirmed it, manifested it, and it became your reality on earth. But here's the key. In verse 3, it said, God said, let there be light. He saw it, he spoke it, and then there was light. But this is what lets us know that God operated in the five conceptions of truth. He said, he looked at it, and it was good. I'm going to pause for you. I want you to get that. I want you to get that. Somebody better hit me. Because when's the last time you thought about something and saw it manifest and then you judged the very thing to make sure that what you were thinking is what you got? Because if you thought of something and got the opposite, that's a sign that you did not flow through the spirit of God, that there's something inside of you that is thinking wrong. You only get one thing, either right or wrong. You get what you ask for or the exact opposite of what you ask for. So let me go into the opposite of true, false. So false means not true, intended, or tended to mislead. So a lot of times when you're not thinking correctly, you start thinking in fear. And fear brings about false creating. And so when's the last time you thought about something and said, I didn't ask for this. But then when you think about it, in your spirit, you kept saying, let me give you an example. I'm bad about this. When I go to a restaurant and I order, a steak. I know how I want the steak. I visualize the way I want it, right? I visualize it. I imagine I visualize it. And then the waiter comes and says, may I take your order? I said, yes, I like your 22 ounce porterhouse and I would like it blackened, medium, well, very little pink. I have visualized how I want it. But watch this, ladies and gentlemen, the moment he turns around and walks away, this is when the truth comes out. I hope they don't mess up my order. What do you mean? You know, most times they always cook it wrong. They, they either make it too raw or they burn it too But Are you getting it, ladies and gentlemen? Because this is my truth. I was asking with my thought, but my fear is they're not going to get it right. And then they bring my steak. I look at it, I cut it, and it's not right. And I get mad and I say, I didn't order this. But the reality is I did because I immediately went into fear that they're going to mess it up. And sure enough, I created in my heavens, my reality on earth. Stop for a second and ask yourself. <laughs> I told you this message is not for everybody, but for those of you that hear how God deals with me. Because I had to start thinking about what I think about. And I come to the realization that I have been creating my reality of fear, of doubt, of pain of abandonment, of self-esteem. That comes from inside of me. And as a man think it, ladies and gentlemen, so is he, because he is God. And as you think as God, you create as God. That's why it's important for you to understand that I can't create in my conceptions a false belief. Although I was asking with my mouth the way I wanted it, in my heaven, I was creating it the way I got it in reality. That's it, Miss Middleton. What you think about, you bring about. False. And then the opposite or the anonym of, uh, of uh, what's the other word I had up here? The next one is 
true, and then we go to noble. So the opposite of noble is inadequate. Inadequate. Y'all hear me? And Rebecca's testifying right now. She's telling you, I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you my truth. Because I always turn and say, they were messing up, and they mess it up. And I had to understand, Carrie, you're operating as God, so you're creating in the kitchen. You're telling the cook, make it this way, because this is where he really wants it. He wants it messed up. Y'all better hear the Holy Ghost. And so then it's inadequate. Inadequate means insufficient, not enough, not good enough. So when's the last time you created something, looked at it, and realized this is not good enough? It's inadequate. And God doesn't create anything inadequate unless he does it, meaning me, unintentionally, but I'm doing it through ignorance. Next, inaccurate, faulty, not accurate, not correct or exact. So in other words, did I really get exactly what I wanted or did I really get exactly what I wanted? I want you all to hear God. How many of you are getting this this morning? This is why it's very, very, you got to be careful how you think, because as God, you're creating from the spirit and you're blaming the enemy. And so you keep saying, I'm fighting the enemy. Pray for me, church. The devil is against me. No, baby, you against yourself. It's how you think. And you, we don't want to, we think it's, we, we think we got to go through these rituals to tap into God. No, you just got to look inward where God lies and get that under subjection and everything outside will line up. Well, some things are imperfect, defective, having a, a defect or a flaw, imperfect in form, structure of function. If I'm creating something that is imperfect, that means defective. And when God created me, I was not created with a deformity. I was created in, in impurity. But with that being said, if my thinking has been laced wrongly and my identity has been stolen to now think a certain way, I'm constantly beating myself up when I sin, quote unquote, because I'm not getting it right. But the reality is, if I don't change my mind, I'm going to keep thinking the same way and creating the same results, thus being imperfect. How do you become perfect? Be changing by the renewal of your mind how you think. God gave us a brain not just to receive, but also to process and to create. You create by default and you don't realize it. But if you really study the scriptures from a different perspective and look at them as parables and fables versus literal, then you'll see this hidden message in every single one of them. Every single one of them. If I create something unpleasant, which is displeasing, displeasing or not agreeable, I'm the reason why I get my results, not the devil. What the devil meant for my ruin, God meant for my good. Take that cliche and throw it out the window. You are the devil. You are God. You are both in one body. The fighting in your members is your thinking versus the God that's trying to break out and live. And despicable is the last one. Whatever deserving to be despised, so worthless or obnoxious as to arouse the moral indignation. In other words, this is just making me sick to my soul. It's despicable. See, in other words, I begin to understand that I am the author and the finisher of my fate. And if I learn how to be the author to create it and finish it with the manifestation, then I can do what Jesus, what God did. He looked at it and he saw that it was good. When you learn to look at what's in your life and judge it the right way, it is a signal of what's going on inside of you that's resulting outside of you. So any issue that Carrie has is not the devil. It's my thinking and what I allow to worry about that has now manifested or created my reality. It's whatever we pray in heaven is revealed on earth. Whatever you ask in heaven is given on earth. Look at that from a different perspective. Whatever heaven is your mind, your reality is your earth. What's the things you ask in heaven? You get on earth. Why do you get it? Because of the power of creation. And ain't nothing new age about this, baby. If you go study history, it's been around forever. It's just not, it's something we don't talk about because it takes away from God. This takes nothing from God. If anything, it empowers me. Because you know what I love about it? When you operate as God, then you operate in the love of God. And God does not pride himself on anything. So knowing that I am God doesn't make me prideful. It, if anything, it makes me more humble that I've tapped into the power and the resource. And now I can truly understand how to love in spite of. 
That's right. We're taught to rely on someone else for abundance. Baby, it flows from you. You have not because you ask not. And whatever world without is because of the world within. And whatever you've messed up inside of you results on the outside. So you can keep you can you can keep on talking about the devil is this and the devil is that, or you can come to the reality of I am God. And I am the devil, quote unquote, because it's a figment. It, it, it is a figure of speech. I am my evil thoughts. My evil is what's producing the evil I deal with. It's not some go outside and draw a line in the sand to keep off evil spirits, but yet they still enter your house. They enter your house because they're inside of you with your thinking. Simple and plain. So I hope today, and I, I'm going to shut it down right there because I, I got more that I'm going to give you next week. And as I said, this is part two. That's why I said in verse three, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light and the light was good. In other words, he saw in his heaven, as I call it, as I call it, ladies and gentlemen, I call it the five steps to success, visualization, I'm sorry, imagination, whatever you imagine, that's the conception, visualization, now you see it, affirmation, meditation, manifestation. That is the same five steps to creation. You first visualize it with a thought. I'm sorry, excuse me. You first uh, imagine it with a thought. Every child is born with imagination, but quickly is replaced with education. Y'all hear that? Imagination is replaced with education, and education takes you from creativity, manifestation, and you start getting things. So the five steps to creation, imagination, that's conception. Next, visualization. You visualize that which you have imagined. Then you begin to affirm it. Then you meditate upon it. Then you manifest it. And that is in everything of your life. Watch this here. I'm scared. I've imagined something bad happening to me. Then I start visualizing something bad happening to me. Then I start affirming, I hope nothing bad happened to me, but you know, the devil's after me. Then I meditate upon it, which means I, every time I get, think about it and get quiet, I'm thinking about it. And then guess what happens? It manifests itself. <clears throat> Let's talk about COVID real quick. Oh God, everybody's getting COVID. I imagine myself with COVID. Then I visualize myself coughing and pain and headaches with COVID. Then I affirm, I hope I don't get COVID, but now my throat starts itching. Then I meditate upon COVID, hoping I don't get it. But in my mind, I'm seeing myself with it. So what's left to happen? In February, for the second time, the Pope's household got COVID. What does this mean? Are we perfect? No, that's why we must take control of our thoughts. Because with that comes anything that is in your life. So I need you today to think about, as we close, your current life situation and ask the question, Have I? did I imagine this happening? Did I visualize this happening? Did I affirm it by talking about it so much, sharing it with others? Did I manifest it by, uh, by meditating upon the time, all the time and then letting you know it manifests itself? If your answer is yes, then you're going to realize I am God and I'm in control of my manifestation. So let me go back to the drawing board. I want to show y'all something real quick as I close. And I see saying close, but you know, I tell you maybe it's just long, but I need to show you something. I got my phone up here. I have an app that I downloaded. Okay. And in this app, it is, uh, let me find it. It is a visualization chart. Okay. And I, I began to create a visualization chart that I can always look at. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. I can always look at. And in creating this, it allowed me to now have my vision board in front of me every day. So I want to see every day. So give me a second to find it because I just downloaded it. So I got to remember what it looked like. But I want you to see this. Oh, it's still over here. I want you to see this because this is going to happen. How many of you were blessed by this word today as I find this real quick? Because I want to show you. If this word bless you, I want you to tell me on the screen, Carrie, you have blessed me. You have given, given me something to go back and think about. You've opened up my ears to hear. And again, I'm not asking you to believe what I said. I'm just asking you to go in and, and, and research it for yourself and, con and conceive it. 
and ask God to help you to understand, am I doing what this man said, but I don't want to accept the reality? And the answer usually is going to be yes. All right. So as you prepare for offering, I want to get ready to show this to you. And I hope I can find it real quick because it blessed me. And, you know, again, I just downloaded, so I'm trying to find it. But it, is this it? Yeah, is this it? Let's see. This may be it. But how many of you are blessed? Care, you have blessed me. Excellent work. God, oh, listen, I'm grateful that you guys were blessed by it. I'm grateful that you allowed the word of God to speak to you because it spoke tremendously to me. And, and I'm, I'm just excited about it. I can't find it right now, guys. I'm sure I'm looking right at it but because I'm trying to hurry up. I can't find it. But there's an app that I downloaded. And in this app, it, it's my it's my actual dream life. And, you know, I, I've got a check right now sitting on my board in my office with a figure on it. And that figure will be in my bank account. And and it's called legacy. It's called legacy. Why is that important? Because as a man thinking, I'm proclaiming, I've taken advantage and I've taken dominion over my thoughts and I've taken dominion over what I do. So for that reason, I am now proclaiming. OK, I will, I'll I have to go back, ladies and gentlemen, and share this with you another time. because I'll have it next week to show you. So I apologize that I don't have it right now, but I will have it next week because I just created it. And it's a new app that I can't. I'm looking right at it, but because I am hurrying for time, I can't give it to you. So with that being said. Let's raise God in offering. If this message truly blessed you this morning, I want you to let's sow seeds in here. Tell me real quickly as we close, what did you get from today's message? What are you going to take from this message today that's going to help you? All right. I want you real quick to type on the screen. What about this message today is going to help you? And again, that's why I gave a disclaimer from the beginning. I knew that some would disagree, and that's fine. Everybody's entitled to how they feel. And as I stated at the beginning, I'm only sharing with you what I have experienced with God, what God has revealed to me. You don't have to listen. You don't have to agree. I just share my, my walk with God. All right. So tell me real quick, what did you get from this message today? What blessed you the most? Renewing of my mind. That's what Diva said. Renewing of my mind. Who else today? What did you get from today's message? And there's a link I just put up for you to donate today to the offering. We'll go over that in a second. Um, someone said, be mindful of my thinking. Yes. Take dominion. Yes, Bill. I have the power to manifest the life that I deserve. Yes. What I am accountable and responsible for in my life. Yes. Keisha said, I will speak life into my coaching business and manifest an apartment. Yes. Watch the thinking. Yes. Understand how much our power of thinking can affect us. Yes. Come on, somebody. The key to manifestation, the five steps. Yes, Seema. That, listen, ladies and gentlemen, everything revolves around those five steps. If you stop right now and look at everything in your life, good and bad, and apply those five steps, you'll see everything I said is true. 